what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today we're going to be taking a look at the most powerful integrated graphics that we've seen so far be it on a desktop or mobile and uh, just to give you a heads up here this is a mobile chip we've got the brand new AMD Ryzen 9 7940HS with Radeon 780M graphics some of you may be familiar with these new Phoenix Point APUs. The Radeon 780M is based on RDNA 3, and when it was initially announced a couple months ago, they stated that this specific chip had those graphics running at 3000 megahertz. But a couple weeks after they posted all of the specs on their website, they dropped that down to 2800 megahertz. Either way, this is definitely the fastest iGPU that we've seen so far. In this video, we've got a lot to take a look at. I'm going to be testing 10 games here to see how they perform on this APU. But before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84, but if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate and Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone and basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. Now these were supposed to release in March, but it's coming up on the end of April and I believe that's when you're gonna be able to get your hands on them. I was lucky enough to buy a unit with this 7940HS from a major retailer in the US. I've got some notifications set up and things like that, and I actually got this shipped overnight. A couple days later, they took the listing down because I'm not sure if they were supposed to sell it yet or not. Either way, we've got one to take a look at today, and uh, overall, this thing is an absolute monster. When it comes to the CPU side of things with that Ryzen 9 7940HS, and especially those Radeon 780M graphics. These are what I'm more interested in because we will be seeing the 78M in handhelds and mini PCs coming up very soon, so definitely keep your eye out. And most of the time, if you pick up, let's say, a laptop or a mini PC with this setup, you're going to get 4800 megahertz RAM, but I've upgraded this to 5600 megahertz, so we will be seeing better performance out of the 780M, but uh, one of the best things about these new APUs is they actually support much faster LP DDR5X RAM up to 7500 megahertz, and as we know, these iGPUs use system memory as VRAM, and the faster we can get it, the better performance we'll see out of the GPU side of things. So once manufacturers kind of jump on board with that, we'll definitely see performance that matches or exceeds the GTX 1060 6 gigabyte variant. But in this video, we're going to take a look at some benchmarks and I'm going to test out a bunch of games here because I was very, very impressed with what these integrated graphics can do. Okay, so first up, we've got OG Skyrim. I know it's an older one, but it's still one of my favorite games and I always love to test it. High settings, 1080p, and I've got it set to 120 hertz. If you take a look at Afterburner up in the top left hand corner, 120 FPS. It's actually really steady there because I only saw it dip down to around 118 a couple times. And you know, overall, I'm still working with kind of newish drivers with the Radeon 780M. So I'm gonna chalk it up to that. But yeah, I mean, this is really awesome to see. Taking a look at a few GPU benchmarks, here we have 3D Mark Night Raid coming in with a strong 30,223. Moving over to Fire Strike, 7,622, looking pretty decent here. And finally, we've got Time Spy with a 3,359. And you got to keep in mind, I'm using beta drivers right now, so these scores can increase. But you know, when it comes to Time Spy, this is the highest that I've seen out of an iGPU so far. I was able to get really close with the Ryzen 9 6900HX, which has the Radeon 680M. But with that, I was using 5600 megahertz RAM overclocked to 6000 megahertz, and not a lot of systems can do that. We were right there at 31. So yeah, I mean, this is definitely coming ahead. But of course, these are synthetic benchmarks, and now it's time to test out some more games. And one of the big questions we always get is, will it run Crisis? And this will actually run Crisis remastered, 1080p, medium settings, over 60 FPS. 
I was pretty surprised by the performance here, and if anybody's interested in seeing the original Crisis running on this, just let me know in the comments below. I have planned a few more videos with this same chipset here. But uh, with remastered, medium settings, 1080p, we're getting an average of around 71 FPS. World of Warcraft is another one I always have people asking about. Now, I don't personally play this game, so we're working with a super low level here. We're at 1080p maxed out. And when I say maxed out from the slider in the graphic settings, we're at number 10. So yeah, I mean, we're basically as high as we can go at 1080p. And we got an average of 98 FPS out of this game. It actually looks really good when you got this set to very high. Next on the list, we've got Genshin Impact 1080p high settings. This does run really well at 60. You'll see Afterburner fluctuate between 59 and 60, something you'd never notice without a frame counter on. But uh, yeah, even with a lot of particles and explosions on screen, it stays pretty steady. Moving over to Spider-Man Miles Morales, and you know, if you wanted to play Spider-Man Remastered, you're going to get about the same performance. 1080p, low settings, and this is one of those games that is just a little odd on iGPUs. Sometimes you can boot it up on the same exact system and get horrible performance. Sometimes it runs really well. And right now, we're at low settings, 1080p, and we got an average of 74 FPS, which is much higher than the 680M. But I really do think a lot of this has to do with the Zen 4 architecture of the CPU here. Dirt 5 did much better than I thought it would. We're at 1080p low settings and we got an average of 71 FPS out of this game. If you've ever tried to run this on a lower end GPU, be it, you know, something like even a 1030 or any kind of integrated graphics, you know how hard this one can be even at low settings. But this Radeon 780M is definitely trucking right through. Super surprised to see this kind of performance out of this game, and I know it's getting a bit older now, a couple years old, but it's still a really hard one to run on low-end setups. I also wanted to test out Ghostwire Tokyo, 1080p low settings, so we're not quite at a steady 60, so dropping this down to 900p would probably be the way to go. But again, this only came out a few days before testing it on the 780M. So performance could increase down the road due to new game optimizations that come out from the developer. This thing handled Borderlands 3 like a champ, 1080p, medium settings, we got an average of 73 FPS. And you'll see it go much higher every once in a while, but by the end of the game, my average in Afterburner was 73. Not bad, fully playable here, and we didn't have to drop this down to low settings. God of War 1080p original settings, FSR set to balance. Now without FSR on, we're right there on the edge, around 56 FPS. But with a little bit of FSR, we're good to go with the 68 FPS average. I did try high settings going into this, really hoping that we could do it that way, but unfortunately, original is going to be the way to go. And by the way, you know, if you wanted to drop it down to low with no FSR, you're going to get about the same frame rate. These Radeon integrated graphics do handle fighting games quite well, even with Vega. So right now, we've got Mortal Kombat 11. 1080p high settings. On old Vega 8 graphics, we could actually get a steady 60 out of it, but we'd have to drop it down to low settings. RDNA 2 is right there at a medium preset, but with new RDNA 3, we can go to high settings here and it looks great. We've got a constant 60 with this fighting game. Another couple fighting games I tested was Injustice 2. We can do that, same exact thing, high settings, 1080p. And Street Fighter 5, obviously maxed out 1080p. But I gotta say, one of the most impressive things that I saw was the Red Dead 2 performance. I'm using the built-in benchmark, we're at 1080p low with FSR set to performance. So we are kind of scaling that resolution down, but yeah, I mean, with lower end systems, you know this one can be a hard one to run. I did test out in-game, and we're getting about the same frame rate, but by the end of this benchmark, we had a low of 38, a maximum of 125, and an average of 71 FPS out of integrated graphics. They've definitely come a long way in the last few years, and this new RDNA 2 Radeon 780M is the most powerful that we've seen so far, and I'm sure we'll see some better performance down the road with faster RAM. 
Overall, the performance we're seeing out of this Phoenix Point APU is on par with something like the GTX 1060 3GB model. Little under the 6GB model, but we're getting there. And another thing I have to mention again is we're on very early drivers. These are beta drivers right now, and as soon as the official Adrenaline version comes out that supports the 780M, I will do some more testing. But I've got a few more videos planned with this APU. I definitely want to test out the Linux performance, and I also want to take a look at some emulation performance. I'm pretty sure we're going to be good to go with basically anything. I'm not worried about the CPU side of things. It really comes down to that 780M and how far we can upscale our favorite emulators. So if you're interested in seeing videos like that, let me know in the comments below. And it'd be really cool if you could hit that subscribe button and think about turning notifications on so you know when I post the next one. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.